Hello everyone, Gliderman here. So today we're going to be working on remembering sine and cosine in math. And so I found a pretty nice and easy way of figuring out exactly what they are. So let's just get right into it. So if we just draw a circle here, and I know it won't be like the most perfect circle ever, but it's a rough approximation. So we've got a circle here, and let's just say we draw uh, the coordinate plane through it. So we've got our vertical axis here, and we've got our horizontal axis here. Let's define this circle as having like a radius of one. So we'll just say that distance here is just r, and then down here we'll just define r equals one. So what would be this coordinate? Well, that would simply be one for the x, because it's one over, and then zero for the y. Up here, this would be zero for the x and one for the y. Back here, it would be negative one for the x and zero for the y. And down here, it would be zero for the x because it's not off of this uh, y axis, and then negative one for the y. Now these values are actually very handy because they match up perfectly with cosine comma sine. And this is just a, the typical notation uh, so that you don't have to keep writing them out uh, perfectly each time. So, and this is, I understand, reasonably close to what the point of the sine and cosine were, but it's a really nice and easy way of remembering them. And you may notice I wrote it down in a very particular manner with its cosine comma sine. Now that matches up precisely with these coordinate pairs. If we define this point here as the zero of our world, let's just say. And so we know that's zero all the way over here, because we're using radians, this will be pi. And then of course back here, this will be uh, two pi. Now up here, this would be pi over two. And down here, this would be three pi over two. And of course you can do these uh, very similarly for 45 and that kind of stuff as well. Uh, 45, 30, 15, whatever you want. If you punched cosine and then passed in zero into a calculator, what you would get is one. If you punched in sine and then zero, you would get zero. And so that's actually uh, the exact same case for all of these different coordinate pairs going around this entire circle. And I've just highlighted a couple of the important ones for you to easily remember. Like, for instance, pi. Well, cosine and then punching in pi, that gives you negative one. Sine, punching in pi, zero. And you can typically just, you know, write this in at like the top of a math problem sheet, and that's typically what I do. Uh, if I'm solving some math problems, I just scribble this little uh, circle and then the uh, different coordinates passed into it. And then I can easily and quickly reference it. And of course, something to highlight would be that this is applying to every single point or every single coordinate pair going along this entire circle. So while it's not as easy to remember, uh, you can easily say, okay, well, I know that pi over 4, which would be this 45 degree angle here, I know that that's blah, comma, blah, or whatever. And so it can be very nice and easy to use that way. So uh, this is kind of a quicker tip, but I hope you guys find that useful for easily remembering what cosine and sine are for different values going around a circle or a sine or a sine chart or whatever um, where you've got your wave going up and down um, 
you can easily remember what's going on there. So thanks very much for watching. If this was helpful, maybe consider giving it a thumbs up or possibly consider subscribing if you haven't. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye!